you have given yourself to the reading of fortunes. Do you deny it? I am innocent to a witch. I know not what a witch is. How do you know then that you are not a witch? If I were, I would know it. Why do you hurt these children? I do not hurt them. I scorn it. I have evidence for the court. You will keep your seat. Thomas Putnam is reaching out for land. Remove that man, Marshall. You are oh. lies. Lies. Arrest him, Excellency. I have evidence. Why will you not oh, give my evidence? Geez. Heads off. Damn you, let me go. Giles. Giles, Giles my way will not. I'm not evidence, Giles. It's a court. Pray be calm a moment. Mr. Hale, go in there and demand I speak. A moment, sir. A moment. Did he hang in my wife? How you dare from more into this court? Have you gone daft, Corey? You were not a bust of jokes yet. Half the one who shot not call me daft. Business man. Child's Corey, sir. I'm more content. I am asked the question and I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Child's Corey. I have 600 acres of timber in addition. And it is my wife you be condemning now. And I imagine to help her cause with such contemptuous right. But be gone. Your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. He's telling lies about my wife, Do you wife, take it upon yourself to determine what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside? Sir, we mean no disrespect. Disrespect, for indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know that? I only said she were reading books, sir, and they come and take her out of my house. Books? What books? It is my third wife, sir. I never had a wife that be so afflicted with books that I thought to find the cause of it, do you see? But we no which I blamed her for. I broke charity with the woman. I broke charity with her. Excellency, he claims hard evidence in his wife's defense. I think in all justice you must hear some of his evidence in proper affidavit. You're certainly aware of our procedure here, Mr. Hab. Clear this room. Come now, Jas. We are desperate, sir. We have been here three days now and cannot be heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. His wife's Rebecca that were condemned this morning. Indeed. I'm amazed to find you in such uproar. We have good report of your character, Mr. Nurse. I think they must both be arrested and condemned. And let you sir. write your plea and We have proof time. for your eyes, sir. God forbid you shut them to it. The girls, sir, the girls are frauds. What's that? The girls, sir, they are all deceiving. This is contempt, sir, contempt. Please, Judge Hathorne. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir. And I think you to be a wise judge to be what you are. And are you aware that near to 400 are in the jail from Marblehead to Lynn and upon my signature? I... And 72 of these condemned to hang by that signature. Excellency, I never thought to say it to such a weighty judge. But you are deceived. Mary Warren, what are you about here? She would speak with the deputy governor. Did you not tell me Mary Warren was sick in bed? She were, Your Honor. When I go to fetch her to the court last week, she said she were sick. She's been striving with her soul all week, Your Honor. Who's she this? She now to tell the truth of this to you. John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, Your Excellency. This man is a mischief. I think you must hear the girl, Peace. sir. Peace! She... What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw no spirits, Never sir. saw no spirits! Never! She assigned a deposition no, to the no. state. I accept no depositions. Now tell me, Mr. Proctor, have you given this story out in the village? We have not. We have come to overthrow the court, Your I Honor. pray you, Mr. Paris. And Mr. Proctor, are you aware that the entire contention of the state of these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I know that. And you, Mary Warren, how come you to cry out these people for setting their spirit against you? That were pretense. I cannot hear you. That were pretense, she says. Ah. And the other girls? Susanna Walcott and the others. They are also pretending? I sir. Indeed. Excellency, surely you cannot let so vile a lie be spread in open court. Indeed not. But it's strike hard upon me that she'll dare come here with such a tale. And Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall hear you or not, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn a hot fire here. And I'll stand all concealment. I know. Let that, me sir. continue. I understand well a husband's tenderness may drive him to extravagance in defense of a wife. Are you certain, mister, in your conscience, that your evidence is the truth? It is, and you will surely know it. And you thought to declare this revelation in the open court before the public? I thought I would. Aye, with your permission. What is your purpose in so doing? Why, I would free my wife, sir. There looks nowhere in your heart nor hidden in your spirit any desire to undermine the court? Why, no, sir. I'll tell you straight, mister. I've seen marvels in this court. I've seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I've seen them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. 
have until this moment not the slightest reason to suspect that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such upright reputation? Do you read the gospel, Mr. Proctor? I read the gospel. Surely not, or you would know that Cain were an upright man, yet he did kill Abel. Aye, God tells us that. But who tells us that Rebecca Nurse murdered seven babies by setting out her spirit on them? It is the children only, and this one will swear she lied to you. Aye, she's the one. Mr. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states she is pregnant now. My wife pregnant? There be no sign of it. We have examined her body. But if she says she's pregnant, then she must be. That woman will never lie, Mr. Danforth. She will not. Never, sir. Never. We've thought it too convenient to be credited. However, if I tell you now, I'll have her living yet another month. And if she begins to show her natural signs, you'll have her living yet another year until she is delivered. What say you to that? Come, man. You say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good, then she saved at least a year, and a year is long. What say you? It is done now. Will you drop this charge? I think I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. We have come to overthrow the court, Your Honor. These are my friends, their wives I are also... not. I'm ready to hear your evidence. I come not to hurt the court. Marshal! I... Go into the court and bid Judge Stoddard and Judge Sewell declare recess for an hour. Let them... Go to the tavern if they will. All witnesses and prisoners are to be kept in this building. Aye, sir. If I may say it, sir, I've known this man all my life. He is a good man, sir. I'm sure of it. Now then, what deposition do you have for us? And I beg you be clear, open as the sky, and honest. I'm no lawyer. The true of heart need no lawyers. Proceed as you will. We read this first, sir. It's a sort of testament. The people signing it declare their good opinion of Rebecca, my wife, and Martha Corey. Their good opinion? These are all landholding farmers, members of the church. If you'll notice, sir, they've known the women many years and never saw no sign that they had dealings with the devil. How many names are on here? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned for questioning. Well, now, Mr. Danforth, I gave them all my word that no harm would come to them for signing. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no one simply all just... All innocent and Christian people are happy for the courts of Salem. These people are gloomy for it. And I think if you would like to know from each and every one of them what discontents them with you. I think they ought to be examined, sir. It is not necessarily an attack, I think. Mr. Danforth, these are all... Confidenty, Christian. Then they may have nothing to fear. Cheever, have one strong for all of these arrests for examination. Now, what other information do you have for us? You may sit, Mr. Nurse. I have brought trouble to these people. No, old man, you have not hurt these people if they are of good conscience. But you must understand, sir, a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There be no road between. This is a sharp time now. A precise time. We no longer live in the dusky afternoon when evil mixed itself with good and befuddled the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up, and them that not fear the light will surely praise it. I hope you will be one of those. She's not hardy, I see. No, she's not, sir. Now, remember the angel, what he say to the boy. Hold to it. Hi. Oh, do that which is good, and no harm shall come unto thee. Hi. Come in. We wait you, John. My deposition, give him mine. Aye. This is Mr. Corey's deposition, sir. Well, what lawyer drew this, Corey? You know I never hired a lawyer in my life, Hathorne. It's very well phrased. My compliments. Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam is in the court, will you bring him out? You say you have no legal training, Mr. Corey. I have the very best. I'm 33 times in court in my life, sir, and always plaintiff, too. Oh, then you're much put upon. I am never put upon. And on my right side will happen. Your father tried a case of mine would be. Thirty-five years ago, I think. Indeed. He never spoke to you of it. No, I cannot recall it. Interesting. He gave me nine pound damages. You were a fair judge, your father. You see, at the time I had a white mare, and this fellow he came to borrow the mare. Aye! There he is! Mr. Putnam, I have here an accusation by Mr. Corey against you. He states that you coldly prompted your daughter to cry witchery upon George Jacobs that is now in jail. It is a lie, sir. Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie. 
What say you to that? A fort on Thomas Putnam is what I say to what that! What proof do you submit for your charge? The proof is there! If Jacob's hates for which he forfeits up his property, that is law. And then but Putnam is so great a coin to buy so great a peace. This man is killing his neighbors for their land. But proof, sir, proof! The proof is there! I have from an honest man who heard Putnam say it. The day his daughter cried out on Jacob's, he promised her a fair share of land. And the name of this man? Why, what name? The man that gave you this information. Why, I can give you no name. And why not? You know well why not. He'll lay in jail if I give his name. He's content of the court. You will death. surely tell us the name. I will give you no name. I give my wife's name not burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. And I have no choice but to arrest you for contempt of the court. This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Ah, it is a proper lawyer. Do you wish me to open court into full session now, or will you give me a good reply? I will give you no name. You are a foolish old man. Cheever, begin the record. Court is now in session. Now ask you, Mr. Court. He has the story in confidence, The devil lies in such confidences. Without confidence, there could be no conspiracy, Your Honor. I think it must be broken, sir. Old man, if your informant tells the truth, let him come here openly like a decent man. But if he hides in anonymity, I must know why. Yes, sir. The government and central church demand of you the name of him who reported Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency, Mr. Hale, we cannot blink it more. There is a prodigious fear of this court in the country. There is a prodigious fear in this country because there is a prodigious guilt in the country. Are you afraid to be questioned here? I may only fear the Lord, sir. But there is a fear in the country nevertheless. Reproach me not with the fear in the country. There is a fear in the country because there is a moving plot to topple Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is part of it. No one to have the man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. You are under arrest for contempt of the court. But you sit and take counsel with yourself. You will be sent to jail until you decide to answer our questions. Oh, peace, Giles! I'll be there to open them. I'll kill you yet! Peace, Giles! We'll prove ourselves. This man is mischief! He needs to hang us all! This is a court of law! I'll have no affrontary here. Forgive him, sir, for his old age. Peace, Giles, we'll prove ourselves. Now we will. You cannot weep, Mary. Remember the angel. What he say to the boy? Hold to it now. There is your rock. This is Mary Warren's deposition, sir. I would ask you remember that until two weeks ago she were no different than the other children are today. You saw her scream, she howled, she swore familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan in the form of women now in jail tried to win her soul away, and then when she refused... know all this. Hi. She swears now she never saw Satan nor any spirit, vague or clear, that Satan may have sent to hurt her, and she declares her friends are lying now. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to, to the heart of the matter. It surely does. I cannot say he is an honest man, I know him little. But in all justice, sir, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, stop here, send him home, and let him come again with a lawyer. Now look you, Mr. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I'm a minister of the Lord, sir, and I not dare take a life without there be a proof so immaculate no slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hare. Surely you do not doubt my justice. This morning I have signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. I'll not conceal it more. My hand shakes as with a wound. This argument, sir, let lawyers present it to you. Mr. Hale, believe me. For a man of such terrible learning, you are most bewildered. I hope you'll forgive me. I've been 32 years at the bar, and I should be confounded where I called upon to defend these people. Let you consider now, and I bid you all do likewise. In an ordinary crime, I was one to defend the accused. One calls up witnesses to prove his innocence. But witchcraft is ipso facto on its face and by its nature an invisible crime, is it not? Therefore, who may be witness to it? The witch and the victim, none other. Now we cannot hope the witches will accuse herself, granted. Therefore, we rely upon the victims and they testify. The children certainly do testify. Now none can deny we are most eager for the witch's confession. Therefore, what is left for a lawyer to bring out? I think I've made my point. Have I not? But she claims the girls are not truthful. And if they are not true, that is precisely what I'm about to consider. What more may you ask of me unless you doubt my probity? I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it then. And let you put your heart to rest.
for deposition, Mr. Proctor. Now I'd like to question Mr. Harris, I bid you be silent. Cheever, will you go into the court and bring the children out? Mary Warren, how come you to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Has he threatened you? No, sir. So you tell me you sat in my court callously lying when you knew people would hang by your evidence? Answer me! I did, sir. How are you instructed in life? Do you not know that God damns all liars? Or is it now that you are lying? No, sir. I am with God now. You are with God now. I, sir. I'll tell you this. You are either lying then or you are lying now. And in either case, you have committed perjury and you will go to jail for it. Do not lightly say you lied, Mary. Do you know that? I cannot lie no more. I am with God. I am with God. Ruth Putnam is not in the court, sir. Where are the other children? These will be sufficient. Sit you down, children. Your friend Mary Warren has given me a deposition in which she swears she never saw familiar spirits, apparitions, nor any manifest of the devil. She claims likewise that none of you saw these things either. Now, children, this is a court of law. The law based upon the Bible and the Bible writ by Almighty God forbid the practice of witchcraft and describe death as the penalty thereof. Likewise, children, the law and Bible damn all bearers of false witness. Now it does not escape me that this deposition may be deceived to blindness. The Mary Warren may well be conquered by Satan who sends her here to distract us from our sacred purpose. If so, her neck will break for it. But if she speak the truth, children, I bid you now drop your guile and confess to your pretense, for a quick confession will go easier with you. Abigail Williams, rise. Is there any truth to this? No, sir. Now, children, a very awkward bit will be turned into your souls until your honesty is proven. Will either of you change your position, or do you force me to hard question? I have not to change, sir. She lies. You would still go on with this? Aye, sir. The poppy were discovered in Mr. Proctor's house stabbed by a needle. Mary Warren claims that she sat beside her in court when she made it, and you saw her make a witness how she herself stuck the needle into it for safekeeping. What say you to that? It is a lie, sir. While well, you worked for Mr. Proctor, were there ever any poppets in his house? Goody Proctor always kept poppets. Your Honor, my wife never kept no poppets. Mary Warren confesses it was her poppet. Your Excellency. Cheever. When I spoke to Goody Proctor, she said she never kept no poppets. But she did say that she kept them when she were a girl. She's not been a girl these 15 years, Your Honor. But a poppet will keep 15 years, will it not? It will keep if it is kept. But Mary Warren confesses she never saw no poppets in my house nor anyone else. Why could there not be poppets hid? Well, no one ever saw them. There might also be a dragon with five legs in my house, but no one has ever seen it. Your Honor, we are here precisely to discover what no one has ever seen. Mr. Danforth, what profit Mary to turn herself about? What may Mary Warren gain but hard questioning and worse? You are charging Abigail Williams with a marvelous cool plot to murder. Do you know that? I do, sir. I believe she needs to murder. This child would murder your wife? It is not a child. Now hear me, sir. In the sight of the congregation, she were twice this year put out of this meeting house for laughter during prayer. What's this laughter during prayer? Do you deny it? It may have happened once. She is sometimes silly, but she is solemn now. Aye! Now she is solemn and goes to hang people! Why? Sure, may I have no bearing on the question, sir. He charges contemplation of murder. Aye. But it's strike hard upon me that she will dare laugh during prayer. You may continue, Mr. Proctor. Mary, now I'll tell the governor how you danced in the woods. Like, so see, since I come to stand this man is blind and on my knee. Sir. What is this dancing? I, Mr. Proctor. Abigail leads the girls to the woods, Your Honor, and they have danced their naked. Your Honor, this Mr. Is... Mr. Paris discovered them himself in the dead of night. There's the child she is. Mr. Paris. All I can say is I never saw any of them naked. But she have danced. 
Abigail, Excellency, when I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Paris told me that. Do you deny no. it? Sir. But I never saw any of them naked. But she have danced. I, sir. Excellency, will you permit me? Right. Proceed. You say you never saw no spirits, Mary. Were never threatened or afflicted by any manifest of the devil or the devil's agents. No, sir. And yet when people accused of witchcraft confronted you in court, you would faint, saying their spirits came out of their body and choked you. That were pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold, did you not? I myself picked up many times your skin were icy, Mr. Danforth. I saw it many times. Surely pretended to faint, Your Excellency. They're all marvelous pretenders. Then can't you pretend to faint now? Now? Why not? She is not attacked now, for none in this room is accused of witchcraft. So let her turn herself cold now. Let her pretend she is attacked. Let her faint. Faint! Faint! I faint. Prove to us how you pretended in the court so many times. I cannot faint now, sir. Can you not pretend it? I have no sense of it now. Why? What is lacking now? I cannot tell, sir. Might it I... be that here we have no afflicting spirit loose while in the court there were some? I never saw no spirit. They see no spirits now. And prove to us that you can faint by your own will as you claim. I cannot do it, sir. Then you confess, will you not? It were attacking spirits made you faint. No, sir, I never You're not. the truth to blind the court. It's not a trick. I used to faint because I thought I saw spirits. Thought you saw but them. But I did not, Your Honor. How could you think you saw them unless you saw them? I cannot tell how, but I did. I heard the girl screaming, and you, Your Honor, you seek to believe them. And they were all the sport in the beginning, but then the whole world cried, spirit, spirit. And I promise you, Mr. Danforth, I only thought I saw them, but I did not. Surely your honor is not taken by this simple lie. Abigail Williams, I bid you now search your heart and tell me this. Beware, child. To God every soul is precious, and his vengeance is terrible on them that take life without cause. Is it possible, child, that the visions you saw in the court were some illusion only, some deception that but made... This is a base question. Child, I would have you consider... I have been hurt, Mr. Danforth! I have seen my blood running out. I have been near to murder every day because I've done my duty pointing out the devil's people. This is my reward. To be mistrusted, denied questions, Child, like, I do let you beware, Mr. Danforth. Think you to be so mighty that the power of hell may not turn your wits. Beware of it, there's... What is it? I, I know not. A wind. Sir, I have known her. You! A lecture, John Kelsey. Oh, Francis, I wish you had some evil in you that you might know me. A man will not cast away his good name. You surely know that. At what time? In what place? In the proper place where my beasts are bedded. On the last night of my joy, some eight months past, she used to serve me in my house, sir. A man may think God sleeps, but God sees everything. I know it now. I beg you, sir, I beg you, see her what she is. My wife, my dear good wife, took this girl soon after and put her out on the high road. And being what she is, a lump of vanity... Excellency, forgive me. She thinks to dance with me on my wife's grave, and well she might, for I thought of her softly. God help me, I lost it, and there is a promise in such sweat. But it is a horse vengeance, and you must see it. I set myself entirely in your hands. I know you must see it now. You would deny every strap and tittle of this. If I must answer that, then I will leave and not come back again. I have made a bell of my honor. I have rung the doom of my good name. You will believe me, Mr. Danforth. My wife is innocent, except she knew a whore when she saw one.
What look do you give me? I will not have such look. You will remain where you are. Mr. Paris, go into the court and bring your wife present. Oh, bring is... her out and tell her not one word of what's been spoken here and let you knock before you enter. We are going to touch the bottom of this swamp. Your wife, you say, is an honest woman. In her life, sir, she have never lied. There are them that cannot sing and them that cannot weep. My wife cannot lie. And when she put the scroll out, she put her out for a harlot. Aye, sir. And she knew her for a harlot. Aye, sir. She knew her for a harlot. Good then. And if she say it were for harlotry, may God spread his mercy on you. Hold! Turn your back. Turn your back. Do likewise. Neither of you are to turn to face Goody Proctor. No one in this room is to say one word of what's been spoken here, or raise a gesture, aye or nay. Enter! Cheever, record this testimony in all exactness. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Come here, woman. You are to look at me only, not at your husband. In my eyes only. Good, sir. We are given to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. Why did you dismiss her? Look at me! The answer is in your memory, and you need no help to give it to me. Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? She dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? Look at me! Was she slovenly lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I, in that time I were sick and... My husband is a good and righteous man. He is never drunk as some are, nor wasting his time at the shovel board, but always at his work. But in my sickness, you see, sir, I were a long time sick after my last baby, and this girl... Look at me! I, sir, Abigail Williams. What of Abigail Williams? I came to think he fancied her, and so one night I lost my wits, I think, and put her out on the high road. Your husband, did he indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man, sir. And he did not turn from you. Look at me! To your own knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of lechery? Answer me, is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Marshall. Elizabeth tell the truth. She spoke and remove her. She, she only thought to say my name. I confessed it. Oh, God. Excellency, it is a natural light of hell. I pray you stop now before another is condemned. I'll shut my conscience to it no more. Private vengeance is working its way through this testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true. And by my oath, I have She believe spoke nothing now. of lechery, and this man has lied. I believe him. This girl has always struck me for She has always. You will not. Be gone! Be gone! What is the child? What's there? What, what is it? It's on the feet of the road! Why do you come, yellow bird? Where's the bird? I see no bird! My face! My face! Mr. Head! Be quiet! Do you see a bird? Be quiet! But John, me, my face, you cannot want to tear my face! And me is a deadly sin, Mary! Abby! Oh, Mary, this is a black art to change your shape! No, I cannot! I cannot stop my mouth! It's God's work I do! Abby, I'm here! Yeah, pretend, Mr. Danforth! Mary, please don't come down! Lies, lies! Mary, please don't hurt me! Why does she see this bitch? She sees nothing! She sees nothing! Mary, Mary, praise God, Mary, why are you doing 
I'm not hanging with you. I love God. I love God. He bid you to the devil's work. He shot at me by night and every day to sign. To sign the what? The devil's book. My name. He want my name. I'll murder you. He says it's my way to We must go and overthrow the party. He says. Mr. Hale. He wakes me every night. His eyes were like coal and his fingers claw my neck. And I sign. He sign. Excellency, this child of God, why? Mary. Mary. I've seen your power, you will not deny it, but say you! This is not witchcraft, these girls are I want nothing from you, Mr. Hale! Will you confess yourself in front of hell, or do you keep that black allegiance yet? But say you! I see! I see God is dead! Fire, a fire is burning, and I hear the boot of Lucifer, and I see his filthy face, and it is my face. And yours stand forth for them that quail to bring men out of ignorance, as I have quailed now. And as you quail now, when you know in your black heart that this be fraud, God damns our kind especially, and we will burn. We will burn together, dead boy. I shall take him in court to the jail. I can now this to say that you are the Lord God of heaven, and raising up all the Lord now with these proceedings, I put this to Mr. Hale! Mr. Hale! Sarah, wake up. Sarah, good. Majesty! Majesty, take him off! He's here! His Majesty's come! Go to the North Cell. This place is wanted now. That don't look to me like His Majesty. Look to me like the Marshal. Get along with you now. Out with you. Oh, is it you, Marshal? I was sure you was the devil coming for us. Can I have a sip of for me going away? And where are you off to, Sarah? We go into Barbados. So the devil gets here with the feathers and the wings. Oh? A happy voyage to you. A pair of bluebirds wing southernly, the two of us. It'll be a grand transformation, Marshal. You best give me that or you'll never rise off the ground. Come along now. I'll speak to him for you, if you desire to come along, Marshal. I'd not refuse it, Tinchbub. It's the proper morning to fly into hell. Oh, it's be no hell in Barbados. Devil, he be pleasure man in Barbados. He be singing and dancing in Barbados. It's you folks. You've roused him up around here. It'd be too cold for that old boy down here. He frees his soul in Massachusetts. But in Barbados, he just... I'm sorry. The tip, Sarah! Let me free! The deputy governor's arrived. Come along. Come along. No! No! He's coming for me! I'm going home! That's not Satan. Just a poor old cow with a half full of milk. Take me home! Devil, take me home! You take me home! Can I take me home? Take me home! You take me home! Good morning, Excellency. Where's Mr. Paris? I'll fetch him. Marshal? When did Reverend Hale arrive? It were toward midnight, I think. What's he about you? He goes among them that will hang, and he prays with them. He sits with the good nurse now, and Mr. Paris with him. The men have no authority to enter here, Marshal. Why have you let him in? Why, Mr. Paris command me, sir. I cannot deny him. Are you drunk, Marshal? No, sir. It's a bitter night, and I have no fire here. Fetch Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. There's a prodigious stench in this place. I have only now cleared the people out for you. Beware our drink, Marshal. Aye, sir. Let you question Hale, Excellency. I should not be surprised to be preaching in Andover. Speak lady. nothing of Andover. We'll come to that. Paris prays with him. That's strange. I think sometimes Paris is a mad look these days. Mad? I met him yesterday coming out of his house, and I bid him good morning. And he wept and went his way. I think it is not well the village sees him so unsteady. Perhaps he has some sorrow. 
I think it'd be the cows, sir. The cows? There'd be so many cows wandering the high roads now that their masters are in the jails, and much disagreement about who they will belong to now. I know Mr. Pear spent all day arguing with the farmers. There's great contention about the cows, sir. It were always a man who weep for contention. Excellency, good morning. Thank you for coming. I beg your pardon. Why can you so early? Good morning, Judge Hathorn. Mr. Hale, I've no Just right. a moment. Do you leave him alone with the What's president? What's his business here? Excellency, hear me. Reverend Hale have returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess. Hear me. Rebecca Nurse have not given me a word this three months since she came. And now she sits with him. And her sister, and Martha Corey, and two or three others, and he pleads with them. Why? Confess their crimes and save their lives. This is indeed a providence, and... They soften me. They soften. Not yet. Not yet, but I thought to summon you that we might think it wise to... There is news, sir. That the court... That the court must be reckoned with. My daughter. My niece. Sir, my niece. I believe she has vanished. Vanished? I thought to advise you of it in a week. Why? How long is she gone? The third night, Mercy Lewis has gone too. I'll send a party for them. Where may they be? I think they'd be aboard a ship, Your Excellency. My daughter tells me of how they were speaking of ships last week, and tonight I discovered my strong box is broken into. She have robbed you! Thirty-one pound is gone. I am penniless. Mr. Paris, you are a brainless man. Your Excellency, it proven nothing you should blame me. I could not think they would run off except they fear to keep in Salem any longer. Mark it, sir! Abigail had close knowledge of the town, and since the news of Andover has broken... Andover is remedied! The court returns there on Friday and will resume examinations. I'm sure of it, sir, but the rumor here speaks rebellion and... There is no rebellion in Andover! I tell you what is said here! Sir! Andover will have no part in witchcraft, they say. They have thrown out the court! There is a faction here feeding on that news, and I fear there will be riot. Riot! Why, well, in every execution, I hear not for high satisfaction it in the town. another sort that hang till now, Judge Hathorn. Rebecca Nurse is no Bridget that lived with Bishop three years before marrying him. John Proctor is no Isaac Ward that drank his family to ruin. I would to God it were not so, sir. But you put Rebecca Nurse on the gibbet and send up some righteous prayer, and I fear she'll strike a vengeance on you. Excellency, but she's condemning you. you. How do you propose then? Excellency, I'll postpone these There will be no postponement. Now Mr. Hales has returned, and I think there's hope. For if he brings even one of these to God, that surely damns the others in the public eye. And none more may doubt that all are linked to hell. This way, unconfessed and claiming innocence, doubts are multiplied. Honest people will weep for them, and our good purpose is lost in their tears. Give me the list. Excellency, I would have you remember that when I summon the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, only 30 people come to hear it. That speak a dis- There will sir. be no postponement. Now, sir, which of these may be brought towards God? I will myself strive with him till dawn. There is not sufficient time. I shall God. do my utmost. A dagger? What do you say? Can I leave my house tonight? When I opened the door, a dagger clattered to the ground. You, you cannot hang this sword! There is danger for me! I dare not stop outside at night! Accept my congratulations, Reverend Hale. We're glad to see you return to your good work. You must pardon them. They will not budge. You misunderstand, sir. I cannot pardon these when twelve are already hanged for the same crime. It is not just. The sun will rise in a few minutes. Excellency, I must have more time. Now hear me and beguile yourselves no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Then I will not confess. Will hang. Twelve already hanged. The names of these seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die in the morning. Postponement, postponement now speaks of floundering on my part and reprieve or pardon must cast doubt upon the guilt of them that died till now. While well, I speak God's law, I will not crack its voice with whimpering. And if retaliation is your fear, know this. 
I should hang 10,000 that dare to rise against the law, and an ocean of salt tears could not melt the resolution of these statutes. Now draw yourselves up like men, and help me as you are bound by heaven to do. Have you spoken with them all? All but Proctor. He is in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now? He sits like some great bird. You know not he lives, except he'll take some food from time to time. His wife. His wife must be well on with child now. She is, sir. Oh, thank you, Mr. Paris. You have closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It is possible. <coughs> you have not seen her this three months. I should summon her. Is he an adamant? Has he struck at you again? He cannot, sir. He's chained to the wall now. Fetch Goody Proctor to me, then let you bring him up. Aye, sir. Excellency. If you postpone a week and publish to the village that you are striving for their confession, that speak mercy on your part, not faltering. Mr. Hale, as God hath not empowered me like Joshua to stop the sun from rising, so I cannot withhold from them the perfection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, then you are mistaken. For rebellion spoken in the town. There are orphans wandering from house to house. Abandoned cattle bellow on the high roads. The stench of rotting crops hangs everywhere. And no man knows when the harlot's cry will end his life. And yet you wonder if rebellion spoke? That you should marvel they do not burn your province. Mr. Hare. Have you preached in Andover this month? Thank God they have no need of me in Andover. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? Why, it is all simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians they should belie themselves. There is blood on my head. Can you not see the blood on my head? Hush. Did he proctor? I hope you're hearty now. I am yet six months before my time. Pray be at your ease. You come now for your life weak. Will you speak with the woman, Mr. Hale? Goody Proctor, your husband is marked to hang this morning. I've heard it. Now you know, do you not, that I have no connection with the courts. I come of my own, Goody Proctor. I would save your husband's life. For free, if he is taken, I count myself as his murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want of me? Goody Proctor, this three months I have gone like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way, for damnation's doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie. You cannot speak of lies. It is a lie. They are innocent. I'll have no more of that. Goody Proctor, do not mistake your duty as I mistook my own. I came to this village like a bridegroom to his beloved very gifts of high religion, the very crowns of holy law I brought. And when I touched with my bright confidence, it died. And when I turned the eye of my great faith, blood flowed up. Beware, goody Proctor. Cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. It is mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift, and no principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. So I beg you, woman, prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie, and quail not before God in this, for it may well be that God damns a liar less than he that throws his life away for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot think you will listen to another. I think that be the devil's argument. Woman, before the laws of God, we are as swine. We cannot read his will. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I am not burning for it. You are not summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness within you. He will die within the sunrise. Your husband. Tell you true, woman. Had I no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes now would be sufficient evidence that you have delivered your soul up to hell. A very ape would weep at such calamity. Had the devil dried up any tear of pity in you? Take her away. It profit nothing she should speak to him. Let me speak with him, Excellency. You'll strive with him. Will you plead for his confession? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. Pray leave them, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you've been notified, have you not? Let you take counsel with your wife. 
And may God help you turn your back on hell. Excellency, let us consider that. If you desire a cup of cider, Mr. Proctor, I'm sure I'd... God lead you now. Child. It grows. There's no word of the boys. They're well. Rebecca Samuel keeps them. You have not seen them. I have not. You are marvel, Elizabeth. I have been tortured. I. They come for my life now. I know it. None have yet confessed. There be many confessed. Who are they? Isaiah Goodkind is one, Goody Ballard is one, there be many. And Rebecca? No, not Rebecca. She is one foot in heaven now, not may hurt her more. And Giles? You have not heard it. I hear nothing where I am kept. Giles is dead. <laughs> when were he hanged? He were not hanged. He would not answer all your neighbor's indictment, for if he denied the charge, they'd hang him, surely, and then auction out his property, and so he stand mute and died Christian under the law. His sons would have his farm now, for he would not be condemned a wizard without he answer I or nay. And how does he die? They press him, John. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead I or nay. They say he gave them but two words. More weight, he says, and died. I've been thinking I would confess to them, Elizabeth. What say you if I give them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, John, but sure. It is a pretense, Elizabeth. What is? I cannot mob the gibbet like a saint. It is a fraud. I am not that man. My honesty is broke, Elizabeth. I am no good man, nothing spoiled by giving them this lie that were not rotten long before. And that you've not confessed till now that speak goodness in you. Spite only keeps me silent. It's hard to give a lie to such dogs. I'd have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It is not for me to give. I'd have you see some honesty in it. <laughs> Let them that never lie die now to keep their souls. It is a pretense for me, a vanity that will not blind God nor keep my children out of the wind, what say you? It come to naught that I should forgive you if you will not forgive yourself. It is not my soul, John, it is yours. But be sure of this, for I know it now. Whatever you do, it is as a good man does it. I have read my heart this three months, John. I have sins of my own to count. It needs a cold wife to prompt let you. Enough, tree. enough. Better you should know I will me. not hear it. I know you. You take my sins upon no, you, I John. take my own, my own. I counted myself. So plain, so poorly made, no honest wrong could come for me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. I never knew how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. What say you, Proctor? The sun is soon up. Do as you will, but let none be your judge. There be no higher judge under heaven than Proctor is. Forgive me, John. Forgive me. I never knew such goodness in the world. I want my life. You'll confess to yourself. I will have my life. God be praised. It is a promise. He will confess. Proctor will confess. Why do you cry it? It is evil, is it not? 
I can it is evil. You. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven, what is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I think it is honest. I think so. I am no saint. Let Rebecca go like a saint. For me, it is fraud. I am not that man. I am not your judge. I cannot be. Do as you will. Do as you will. Would you give them such a lie? <laughs> Say it. Would you ever give them this? You would not. If tongues of fire were singing you, you would not. It is evil. Good, then. It is evil, and I do it. <laughs> Praise to God, man. Praise to God. We'll be blessed in heaven for this. Come then. Let us have it. Are you ready, Chipper? Why must it be written? Why? This we shall first post on the church door. Where's the marshal? Marshal? Hurry! Will you speak slowly and directly to the point for Cheever's sake? Proctor, have you ever seen the devil in your life? Come, man. There's light in the sky. Did you see the devil? I did. Praise God. When he come to you, what were his demand? Did he bid you do his work upon the earth? He did. Did you bind yourself to his services? Come in. Come in, woman. Oh, John. You are well then. Eh? Courage, man. Courage! Let her witness your good example that she may turn to God herself. Your own good nurse. Did you bind yourself to the devil's services? Why, John? I did. Now, woman, you should see that it truly profit nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. You confess yourself with him. God sends his mercy on you, John. I ask you, will you confess yourself? It is a lie. It is a lie. How may I damn myself? I cannot. I cannot. When you found yourself in the devil's company, did you ever see Rebecca Nurse? No. Did you ever see her sister, Mary Easty, with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with the devil? I did not. Did you ever see anyone with the devil? I did not. Miss Proctor, you mistake me. I'm not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You've most certainly seen some person with the devil. A score of people have already testified that they saw this woman with the devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say Why it? Why must you say it? Or you should rejoice to say it if your soul is truly purged of any love for hell. They think to go like saints, I like not to spoil their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? This woman never thought she'd done the devil's work. Proctor, you mistake your duty here. It matters not what she thought. She's convicted of the unnatural murder of children, and you for sending your spirit out on Mary Warren. Your soul alone is the issue here, mister, and you will prove its whiteness where you cannot live in a Christian country. But to your own knowledge, has Rebecca I speak my own sins, I cannot judge another. I have no tongue for it. As little is enough, he confess himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. It is a great service, sir. It is a weighty name that will strike the village of to confess it. I thank you, sir, that you sign it. The sun is up, Excellency. Come then. Give it to him. Sign the testimony. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. You will not sign it. You have all witnessed it. Well, you are in accord with me. You will give me your signature. It is not a proper confession. Praise be to the Lord. If you please. No. Mr. Proctor. No, no, I've signed it. You've seen me. It is done. You have no need of this. Proctor, the village is dead. The village. I confess to God, and God has seen my name on this. It is enough. No, it is not enough. You came to save my soul, did you not? Here I have confessed myself. It is enough. I have not. Confessed. I have confessed myself. 
Is there no good penitence but it be public? God does not need my name nailed upon the church. God sees my name. God knows how black my sins are. It is enough! Mr. Proctor, I must... You will not use me! It is no part of salvation that you should use me. I am no Sarah Good or Tituba. I am John Proctor. You will not use I me. I do not wish to use you. I have you. three children. How may I teach them to walk like men in the world? And I sold my friends. You have not sold your friends. Beguile me not. I blacken them all in this snail to the church the very day they hang for silence. Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal the high house. court. Your word is good enough. Tell them Proctor broke to his knees and wept like a woman. Say what you will, but my name I cannot sign. It is the same, is it not? If you sign to her... No, no it is not the same. What others say and what I sign to you is not the same. Why? Do you wish to deny this confession once you are free? I mean to deny that. Then explain thing. to me why you will because not... Because it is my name! Because I cannot have another in my life! Because I lie and sign myself to lies! Because I'm not worth the dust on the feet of them that you have hanged! How may I live without my name? I have given you my soul! Leave me my name! Mr. Proctor, is this document a lie? If it is a lie, I will not accept it! You will not deal in lies, sir. You will give me your confession or I cannot keep you from the rope! Which way will you go? Show them honor now. Give them no to your tears pleasure then. Show them a stony heart and sink it with it. Let you fear nothing. Another judge against us all. Hang them high over the town. Who weeps for them? Weeps for corruption. <laughs> I take that from him. 